We've talked about how every use of a constructor, a variant constructor, in our interpreter, that corresponds to allocation. And we made a version of our interpreter where we changed all of these construction calls to explicit calls to malloc where we implemented malloc. So that means we have an interpreter that's full of mallocs, but no calls to free. Once we allocate these data structures, where should we free them so that we don't run out of memory? We might say that we should free things just after we finish using them. So uh, here in the continuation function, in the continue function, when we're done with a plus continuation um, and we're going to go on to the rest of the continuation, maybe we can free the, uh, the plus continuation itself. And similarly, when we have an application, we've evaluated the function expression to some value. We're about to call that function, so we've got the, the body out of the closure and the environment. Maybe we can free the closure at that point. Unfortunately, these may not be OK places to free the values. For example, in do plus k, this actually is OK, but it's only OK because we don't have let cc in our interpreter right now. Uh, if we don't have let cc, then the only reference to the continuation is in fact in this k-reg, uh, and so we can free it. In fact, most languages don't provide let cc, and they can implement continuations as a stack. The allocation of a continuation frame, like a do plus k frame, uh, that corresponds to a push onto the stack, and the free right here when we resume a continuation, uh, the rest of the continuation, that corresponds to a pop on the control stack. So we could put free here sort of right now because we don't have let cc, but it's not a very general way to solve the problem, even for continuations. And the problem is worse with uh, applications because in curly, there can be multiple references to a single closure. Uh, you can assign a closure to a variable and then refer to that variable multiple times. So just because you're calling a closure doesn't mean you're done with it for good. We need a way of freeing things like closures or even continuation records only if no one else is using it. So as we talk about uh, allocation and deallocation now, I'm going to use the word object, but I won't mean object in the Java or objects in classes sense. An object is just going to be any record that we allocate during interp and continue. Okay? And we're going to assume that these um, the, only the things that are allocated during interp and continue matter, that the expressions part, that the, the code that interp and continue is looking at, uh, that can be allocated statically. We won't try to, to uh, change the code that we're running as we're running it. So to do that, to do that static allocation of code, compile is going to use a, a separate kind of malloc, code malloc, that will allocate into its own code space, um, and we will only look at objects like closures and numvs and continuation records that are actually allocated during interp and continue. 